Well, warm welcome to today's talk. It's Monday the 17th of April. Now, I hope you got the chance to watch yesterday's video on the pathological uh, findings from the uh, German research related to COVID vac vaccinations, COVID-19 vaccinations. Now, today I'm going to be giving uh, evidence, which is basically uh, incontrovertible evidence, that there is free spike protein in the blood of uh, young people who've been vaccinated against SARS coronavirus to using the predominantly in this study the Pfizer vaccine but also to some extent the Moderna vaccine and this was carried out in uh, in uh, Boston area with uh, some co uh, cooperation from Harvard Medical School so it's a pretty reputable study and um, as this evidence accumulates, it's just really still quite incredible that the uh, COVID-19 vaccination guidelines for young people have not changed in the United States. In the United Kingdom, they essentially have. We've quietly backpedaled. You now need to be over 75 or immunocompromised to get the vaccine, but it's not so in the States. Um, now, whether in practice uh, children are still being vaccinated with COVID-19 vaccines in the States, I'm, I'm not really sure. Do, do let me know about that. But the point is the science is changing and the guidelines are not. This is the thing that's utterly bizarre. Now, the study we're going to look at is from the internationally peer-reviewed journal Circulation. So Massachusetts research, published in Circulation, pretty reputable stuff. Time to change the guidelines, you might have thought. Now, let's look, let's look at this now. Just before we start, there are a couple of strange things about this study, which we three strange things about this study that we'll look at as we as we go uh, along. Now, this is the study here. Um, circulating spike protein detected in post-COVID vaccine, messenger RNA vaccine, myocarditis. These are people who've been detected to have myocarditis. So the background that they give here, um, cases of adolescents and young adults developing myocarditis, tragically, we know, after the vaccines reported globally but they're saying that the immune profiles what's actually going on is not been well studied and that's actually true there's not a lot of studies in this i think quite a few academic institutions between just between you and me seeing there's no one else listening seem to be a little bit afraid of this kind of research which is uh, which is some might think it's surprising others might think it's to do with the way that this research is funded of course Anyway, let's carry on with this particular paper. We're on, we're on solid ground. The methods, so pretty well um, January 2021 through to February 2022, so it's a good time period. Prospectively collected blood. So what they did was um, children, ad ad adolescents, I think the average age was uh, 15. The age range was 12 to 21. When they came in, they prospectively enrolled them in the study uh, as they came into the hospitals with... Uh, inflammatory heart diseases after the vaccination and of course they were careful to eliminate the possibility that this wasn't caused by infection they do talk about this consistently as being a post vaccination syndrome so they collected the blood um, 16 patients 12 to 21 years um, most of them were male and this is consistent with the findings that we are getting from around the world that most patients with myocarditis are, uh, are adolescent uh, boys and, and young men and yet the United States guidelines still advises for them to be vaccinated strange but true most after the second dose of course as we know with these vaccine side effects um, onset was typically four days after the vaccination within the first week Massachusetts General Hospital Boston Children's Hospital admitted for myocarditis uh, chest pain and elevated cardiac troponin type 2 now I think I think we know about the um the cardiac troponins now, the, the troponins are um, um, they're, they're to do with the contractile apparatus in the myocardium and when the cells are damaged, the troponins are released. So the troponin levels are supposed to be low, but in these young people with heart cell damage, they were uh, increased. They had elevated troponins after the vaccination. They did antibody profiling. They included tests for sars coronavirus 2 specific humoral response. That's the antibodies. Assessment for auto autoantibodies basically did a whole immune uh, screening profile on these people and looked for the inflammatory markers uh, as well. SARS coronavirus, two specific T cells were also analysed, which is good. Now, this has been a weakness in studies in the past. 
and particularly done by, for example, vaccine manufacturers who tend to look at the antibody response, which obviously you're going to get because you're introducing an antigen. But this study looked at the protective T cell response as well, which is remarkably uh, encouraging and, and, and good science, the correct thing to do. So this is what they looked at. Now, the comparator group, they had uh, 45 asymptomatic age and match control uh, vaccinated control subjects. Now, the obvious question is, why did they not include unvaccinated subjects? Blatantly obvious omission from this research. That's one of the strange things that I was going to mention about this study. Why on earth didn't they do that? Really is quite strange. And the authors do conclude that their research doesn't alter the risk-benefit analysis and the benefit of COVID vaccination. So, it seems clear um, that these researchers, um, 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 I, what am I allowed to say? It seems clear that these researchers aren't thinking in the same way that perhaps you and me are. I think I might be allowed to, to say that. Strange. Um, yeah, very, very strange that they didn't, uh, didn't include unvaccinated control subjects. <laughs> utterly, utterly bizarre in my view that they didn't do that, but they didn't. So but the data we've got is still the data we've got, which is interesting. It still clearly shows the free spike protein. So they ended up with two groups, the myocarditis group and the control group. But the control group were also uh, vaccinated. It's just that some got myocarditis and the vaccinated uncontrol the controls didn't. Now, things that were the same in both groups between the myocarditis and the non-myocarditis group. But remember, <laughs> strangely, both groups vaccinated. So... OK, you can kind of see what they're getting at. They want to know why some people who were the vaccine get myocarditis and some people don't. It's, it is a legitimate, it's a legitimate study, but it would have been very interesting to have data from healthy controls, that is for sure. Um, antibodies, the immunoglobulins, the IgMs, the ones that are produced immediately, almost immediately in the IgGs, were actually the same in both groups. Um, and the T-cell response was the same essentially indistinguishable. Now, uh, they thought this was encouraging because it means that the myocardial damage doesn't seem to be caused by T-cell activity, which could cause more severe, more permanent damage, as it may well do in adults. But this is in young people, of course. That is the, uh, the, the difference in this study. So th th they're not the same. But things that were different between the myocarditis group and the non-myocarditis group there was a modest increase in cytokine production. So these are the inflammatory, pro-inflammatory cellular messengers, reminiscent of the profile seen in multi-system inflammatory syndrome in, in children. So here, here we see that it's um, concerning um, that the people suffering from the side effects of vaccine were getting similar features in some ways or similar chemical changes in the blood to those with that rather nasty multi-system multi inflammatory syndrome in children. Uh, the white blood cells were increased in the ones that had um, myocarditis and the neutrophils were significantly increased. Now the neutrophils, uh, again, this is surprising. It's not the ones we would expect. The German pathological data showed mostly lymphocytes in the, uh, in the damaged areas of myocardium. So this, this is different, but this is what they found. So that's all we can report. Neutrophils, of course, are normally associated with combating bacterial infection, whereas the lymphocytes are normally associated with combating viral infection. So it's a surprising finding, but it's what they found. Uh, markedly elevated uh, levels of full-length spike protein. So they found in these patients, these unfortunate children and young people that had myocarditis, whole spike protein, not the broken down S fragment of the spike protein, the whole spike protein protein circulating in the blood. Obviously, you want to know where it came from. More on that in just a minute, because that's part of the strangeness about this study. So these were markedly increased levels. So no question that there was this free spike protein circulating around, not bound by antibodies. Detected in post-vaccine myocarditis patients, but whereas the ones that didn't develop myocarditis, but had still been vaccinated, they didn't find free spike protein circulating. Now, they did speculate quite a bit as to whether it was the spike protein that was causing the actual myocardial damage or whether there was a common cause of these two things. I don't think that was fully resolved in this study. Do read it for yourself. It's actually quite a readable study. But anyway, the difference between the two was very highly significant. 
In, in other words, it's not chance that this correlation was identified with this high levels of free spike protein circulating in the blood. And of course, given that it's not from infection, there's only one place that spike protein could have come from. It came from the vaccines. The vaccine stimulated the body's own cells to make that spike protein. It couldn't have come from anywhere else. Um, why spike protein persisted in post-vaccination myocarditis? Now, this is one of the other strange things about this study. You're going to have to think about this because it's, it's a bit complicated, but it's worth it because it's really curious. Um, so basically what they're saying is in, in the uh, myocarditis patients, the spike protein persisted, what, for days or a week or a week or two, possibly even longer. They didn't do follow-up, which is also a bit strange. Not much follow-up in this study, has to be said. Um, but what, So basically they're trying to ask the question, why did the spike protein persist? In post-vaccine myocarditis, the spike protein appears, appears to evade uh, antibody um, recognition. So normally the spike protein would be bound by uh, antibodies, and it wasn't. It was completely free, left free to cause potential havoc around the cells of the body. Why, why was this the case? Now, I'd been reading this article and I thought, oh, wh 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 why is there free spike protein? And I was expecting some satisfying answer. And then when I read the first part of the sentence, I said, good, I'm going to get the answer now. But this was the answer. Because anti-spike protein antibodies that are generated are produced in adequate quantities with normal, normally functioning and neutralizing capacity. So they're saying that the spike protein evades recognition because there's plenty of spike protein antibody made and it's made in normal amounts and it works physiologically normally. So they're saying here that the spike protein persists because the antibody response is normal and normal amounts of spike protein antibody are produced, which works perfectly well. So the reason the spike protein persists is because everything's working perfectly. It makes no sense at all. No sense at all. Now, is this incompetence from these writers? Well, <laughs> these are leading academics and doctors, specialists in, um, in, in the Boston area. So, no, I, I don't think they're incompetent at all in any way, shape or form. Um, why didn't the peer reviewers pick this up? Is an interesting question. Why didn't the peer reviewers pick up the fact that the authors have said that the spike protein persists because the antibody response is normal and functions normally? It doesn't make any sense. What is the real reason? Is there some information they have that they're not publishing here? That, it, we don't know, of course, but to me, that sentence makes no sense whatsoever. Anyway, never mind that. What we know for sure is that from this data is that spike protein, free spike protein, whole spike protein, the whole big thing, not a fraction of it, is persisting in these patients with um, vaccine-induced myocarditis. And given that uh, it's caused by the vaccine, had these people, children, young people, not been vaccinated, they wouldn't have had the spike protein and they wouldn't have had the myocarditis. Um, but despite identifying the pathologies that were identified yesterday, on the video yesterday, despite identifying this, the guidelines haven't changed. And this research is a few weeks old now. It was from the middle of March, I think. So this was about a month ago, uh, but there's been no response. So strange that that is the case. So a few strange things about this study. Um, what, 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 why did they give a completely nonsensical reason for why the spike protein persists? Why on earth didn't they compare unvaccinated with uh, vaccinated people? Why did they only compare... Uh, the vaccinated with myocarditis and the vaccinated without myocarditis. So very nice piece of science, very, very well written study, very, very well conducted, but a few, to my mind, uh, glaring uh, emissions. Um, strange, a bit, bit strange really. So anyway, we conclude that spike protein is present. Now what I think is happening, I think that the vaccine has got into the myocardium the myocardium is producing the antigen. The immune system is attacking the myocardial cells because it's expressing the antigen. Well, the immune system's not really attacking the myocardial cells. It's attacking the spike protein because the, the, because the spike protein is sticking to the surface. 
of the cell uh, membranes of the myocardial cells, they get damaged as well in the collateral damage. A well-known mechanism of inflammation. I think that's what's happening. And I think the reason that the antibodies are unbound and persisting is because they're being produced in large amounts. Uh, now, the researchers didn't say that. That's just me thinking out loud of one possible mechanism. They have much more information than me. And yet the reason that they give for why the spike protein persists is completely uh, nonsensical. So make of that what you will, but take away the message that these young people would not have had the free spike protein had they not been uh, vaccinated. This is a vaccine complication. I think that is now definitively um, proved. Now, just before we finish, Simon's been busy again. Oh, no, no, no one more thing. Uh, the, I, I put myself into the, uh, into the um, health service um, tracker, um, health service vaccine application thing, and it said I do not need to book a COVID vaccination. Um, so I put in my details to apply for a COVID vaccination, and it said I, I don't need one. Um, don't need one or have we decided that the risk benefit analysis is different even at my great age uh, that I no longer need one maybe a little bit disingenuous there from the National Health Service I, I, do, I, do, I do hope not I hasten to add had I been offered one I would not have been taking the offer up I just did it to see what came out and that is what came out that I do not need one right now, um, Simon's been busy again. Um, Simon, who uh, runs up my posters for me, uh, you often suggest the ideas. Uh, th 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 this, is, this is the latest uh, posters he's come up with. Lots of posters, free downloads. Now, I've put the posters and my textbooks on the same uh, website so you, you can download them completely free. Um, I just like the idea of people around the world having these posters up in their, in their bedrooms or toilets or wherever. Uh, th this, this post is, how dare you have doubts uh, from this rather brutalist uh, building. So um, um, this reminds us not to have any doubts at all about what authority tells us. We must accept everything on face value from our betters. Um, or must we? Um, that is what that poster is about. How dare you have doubts? This next one is a variation. How dare you question me? Pretty good one there. Um, these are all high-res photos, of course. You can download them and blow them up or whatever you think. And the last one is we don't want people thinking for themselves, so how dare you think? Oh, I've just noticed these all come from the Ministry of Truth. Um, make of those what you will. Print them out if you would like to. Do go to the website. Do download the posters. We're getting quite a few, we're getting about three, 4,000 posters downloads a day at the moment. So it's, it's, it's interesting. If people like them, that's great. And of course, you can download my PDFs of my uh, textbooks that I've written completely free of charge from the same, from the same site. So there we have it. Uh, free spike protein circulating the blood of young people with myocarditis. Not good. Not supposed to be there. Only there because of the vaccine. Thank you for watching.